Hey everybody, I'm Sam Webb and this is part four of my Shopify theme build series. Today, we'll be building a collection template. So let's get started. For the past few videos, we've been working with the homepage. So now it's time to, to switch pages and, and work on the collection page. I have a few collections, one of which is the collection for all new products. So let's go slash collections, slash new. And this takes us to an empty page, right? We haven't done any work on collections yet. So switching over to the code, I've made a few files. I've made collection.liquid, which is a set, which is the uh, the template. And then we've also got the collection template section, which is empty. And we've got collection.scss, which has a bunch of the CSS that's gonna be used for this feature. So hopping back to collection template, this is where we're gonna be writing all of our code today. And for today, we're going to be focusing on two objects in Shopify. The collection object, which is the object that has all the information about a collection. So it's gonna have the title, the image, the URL, the different products that are part of that collection. And we're gonna also be working with the paginate object and the paginate tag in Shopify. The purpose of the paginate tag is to take a collection that might have a bunch of products on it and split it up into manageable chunks for the user to view. So let's say your collection has 30 products. Instead of showing all 30 products on that page, instead you might wanna show 10 products per page and have three different pages. So that's what the paginate tag is for. So let's start out by getting a little bit of structure into this file. So first we're, we're gonna want a wrapper element and then we're gonna want to kind of put everything inside of that. So we're gonna have this one wrapper element called collection. And within that, we're gonna have an image. So let's say div class. And then we're actually gonna put the image. And let's name this image, collection image. So we're gonna have an image that's gonna span the entire top of the page. And then after that, we're gonna have the title and a little, uh, maybe a short description or a long description of what this collection is. And then after that, there'll be the list of, of products within the collection. And then finally, it'll be pagination. So let's say div class collection wrapper. So we can wrap all of this. And then in here, we're gonna want a header. heading, which we're gonna make an H1, and I'm gonna leave it blank for now, and I'll say subheading. Actually, let's call it description. And then after the header, so, we're, so, so right now we've got the image, we've got the heading, we've got description, and so, you know, this, after this header, we're gonna want our product list and so for now I just say div class and then we'll make this uh, collection grid and within here we're gonna have some products and then after this let's say class uh, collection pagination And that's our structure. So now I want to talk about the collection object, right? As I mentioned earlier, it'll have things like the title, the description, and the image on them. And so let's start using that. So within source, we're going to say collection, collection dot Im image. 
So we'll use the image URL filter and just put master. And then for alt text, we'll say collection dot image dot alt. Moving down to the header, we're going to need the heading and description. So we're going to grab collection dot title and collection dot uh, description. Let's take a look at the front end. And now we've got our image up top and this image is pulled directly from the collection and we've got our our title which is new and then we've got our little description see our latest releases and now we want to work on the grid and this is where the pagination object is gonna is gonna come in and it's actually gonna mix a little bit with the collection object so I'm gonna wrap both of these final divs in a paginate tag so paginate collection dot products by one. And usually, and so this is where you would say, this is where you're deciding if you want to have uh, 10 products on a page or, or five or whatever. Right now I'm putting one because there aren't that many uh, products within this collection. And so I just wanna give you an idea of what it's gonna look like. Let's indent that and add our end tag. And then here, we're gonna say uh, for product in collection dot products in that for. And if you remember in the last video, we made a we made a product tile snippet, and I I might have mentioned in that last video I might not have but we made it in that way for the specific reason of being able to reuse it across the site so that we don't have to rebuild that every time uh, we need to have a product kind of grid item or a product tile on a page. So if we hop into snippets and we see product tile here, so it, if we open that back up, we remember that it's, it's, it's an anchor tag that has a bunch of information about the product and it, and it requires a product as an argument. So if we hop back over here and we say render uh, product tile with product and we save that. that will load the product on the page for us. And we've got that same hover effect. When we, if we, while I'm hovering on this, if you look at, down at the bottom left, you can see that there's the URL down there. And so this, so this is, this is a bunch of code that we did not have to write for this, right? It's reusable. But if I, if I change this to four really quickly and I hit save, refresh this page you notice we've got four products on the page at the moment and going back to one it'll only show one so now we want to show the pagination and we want to be able to to switch between pages to see the different products you know listed out and so let's start by saying four part in paginate And pagination is broken up into different parts. So parts would be uh, the, the different pages. Part dot title link to part dot URL. Save that. And what that will do is it will show every page uh, at the bottom here linkable. One of the one of the things here is that page one is not actually uh, shouldn't be a link right because we're on page one so we don't need to have that be a link and we also can't tell which page is active so for this next step we're going to want to determine which 
when to show a link and when not to show a link. So let's say if part dot is link, then continue doing that. Else span part dot title. In diff. Right now, you can see that when I hover over this one, so first off, the one is has a, kind of an active state and showing us which page we're on, and it's also just giving us the the highlighting cursor instead of the hand, which we get when we hover over two, three, and four. And if I click two, it takes me to that second page and two is highlighted, the same with three and four. Now there are just a few things I wanna clean up here. Uh, the image, I don't want, I don't want the image to, to be required, right? I don't have an image uploaded on every collection, so let's put an if statement around that. Uh, same with the, the description and the title. So let's say if collection dot description and then I don't want the header to show at all if there's no description, right? I only want or if there's no title. I only want the description to show if obviously if a description exists, but also if the title exists. But if there's no title, I want this section to be hidden altogether. So I'm going to wrap this whole thing in if statement if collection dot title. I'm going to save, and we shouldn't see any difference on the front end. But I'm going to change this to two just so that we don't have one product per page. I'm going to save that. And that's how you build a really simple, really fast collection page. There are more features that you can add to this. You can add a sort by option, which is a little bit more complex. And you can add filtering, which is even more complex. But uh, for now, we're going to stick to this. And let me know if you, you want to see any of those other options. And in a, we might be able to do that in a future video. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.